Now we're going to talk about two-way tables. We're at 13.4a and we're going to discuss joint relative frequency and marginal relative frequency. A two-way table is a useful way to organize data that can be categorized by two variables. Joint relative frequency is the ratio of the frequency in a particular category divided by the total number of data values. So, 20 people were asked, do you know how to swim? Of the children, 3 said yes and 8 said no. Of the adults, 7 said yes and 2 said no. There's 20 people asked. For children yes, we have 3 twentieths. For children no, we have 8 twentieths. For adults yes, we have 7 twentieths. And for adults no, we have 2 twentieths. We took the amount and put it over the total number of people asked. See? Marginal relative frequency is the sum of the joint relative frequencies in a row or a column of a two-way table. So, do you know how to swim? 20 people were asked. For the marginal relative frequency, we take this 3 divided by the 20, so that's 3 twentieths as a fraction, as a ratio, isn't it? And it's going to equal 0.15. For the no, we have 8 divided by 20, or 8 twentieths. That's going to equal 0.4. We total up the 0.15 and the 0.4, and we get 0.55 for our total, for our marginal relative frequency. For the adults, we do 7 twentieths, or 7 divided by 20, we get 0.35. For the no, we do 2 divided by 20, or 2 twentieths, that gives us a 0.1. We add them together and get a 0.45. When we total the adults and children who said yes, we get a 0.5. When we total the adults and children who said no, we get a 0.5. When we total the children and adults, who said yes and no, we get a one whole, 0 0.55 plus 0 0.45. Also, when we total the yes and no's, we get a one. So this box down here will equal one. We can find joint and marginal relative frequencies from a table that shows the results of 80 randomly selected high school students who were asked if they prefer math or English. So we have 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade, and we have math and English. For the 9th graders, 10 said they prefer math, and 12 said they prefer English. For the 10th graders, 12 liked math and 11 liked English. For 11th grade, we have 11 for math and 8 for English, and for 12th, we have 8 for math and 8 for English. We can make a table of joint and marginal relative frequencies. For the joint relative frequencies, we divide each value by the total of 80. So for math in ninth grade, 10 said they liked math. So we have 10 80ths, which is equal to 0.125. In 10th grade, 12 liked math. So we have 12 80ths, that's 0.15. There were 11 in 11th grade. That's 11 80ths, that's 0.1375. And in 12th grade, 8 liked math, that's 8 80ths, or 0.1. For English, we had 12 here in 9th grade, that's 12 80ths. We can take that value because we already did it, that's 0.15. 11 out of 80 in 10th grade liked English. We already have that value here, so we can use the same math, 0.1375. 8 80ths in 11th grade and 8 80ths in 12th grade. If we total the 0.125, the 0.15, the 0.1375, and the 0.1, we're going to get a total of 0.5125 for here. That's our marginal relative frequency for math. For English, we total the 0.15, the 0.1375, the 0.1, and the 0.1, and we get 0.4875. We add these two together in this column, and we should have a 1. If we total these two, we should get a 0.275. If we total these two, we should get a 0.2875. 
this total will be a 0.2375, and here we have a 0.2. When we add these together in this row, we should have a 1. So remember, that box should be a 1 for a 1 hole. So real quick, one last time, joint relative frequency. We take the value like 10 here for ninth grade math. We divide it by the total number of people asked, which was 80. We have 10 80ths, which as a decimal is 0.125. For the marginal relative frequencies, we add up these rows and columns. And remember, this box down here should be a 1. See, it should total a 1. That one represents 100% of the people asked. We're going to move on to the second part of 13.4 and talk about conditional relative frequency, which is followed by 13.5a, and we're going to talk about simple events, compound event, mutually exclusive events. I think we only have three more videos until we're finished with high school geometry. I hope you understood this lesson. I hope you're doing well, and have a great day. Bye.